With the rebuilt power supply back in place, the AC hum is finally gone. But there's another problem. The 8.5 volt fuse, which is 500 milliamps, keeps blowing. I finally traced the fault down to this board right here. It's called the TKC board. The TKC board works in conjunction with these two other circuit boards nearby. The function of this system that we're looking at here is part of the polyphonic aftertouch, which is one of the treasures that have made this keyboard stand out above all others in many respects. The CMOS digital ICs on this board were built in the early, actually late 70s, early 80s. Actually, it would be late 70s, I believe, which is one of the earlier fabrication processes. And there is a known defect in the actual way the chips are manufactured that causes the transistors in them to fail over time, specifically from ion or metal migration in the actual junction of the transistors. This gives you a chip with a lifespan of approximately 15 years. Seeing as these keyboards are about 25, 30 years old, these chips need to go. And somewhere on this board is a shorted out device. I get about a 3 ohm resistance from ground to the plus 15 volts that the chips run on. They actually drive them off the plus 8.5 and the negative 6.5 to give you a 15 volt rail, which you know standard CMOS devices use. But somewhere on that board is a shorted part. And we're going to solve the problem by replacing all of these chips with brand new pieces. Another problem is there are no decoupling capacitors of any kind. Even though these are low speed digital operations that are taking place in this board, there should be decoupling capacitors and we're going to add sockets that actually have decoupling capacitors installed in them to remedy this. Before I actually go through and repair this board, I'll explain in just very vague terms how this polyphonic aftertouch system works. It's quite amazing. If you look at the keyboard edge on, you'll see underneath the foot of each key is a small transducer. It's a, it's a variable resistor. It's a pressure sensitive resistor. It's right there. Most keyboards for velocity sensitive keys that detect how hard you hit the key use only one or perhaps two of these transducers for the entire keyboard. This particular machine uses 61 individual transducers, one for each key. When the key comes down, it rests on that transducer, and by the way you apply weight to the key, almost like a thumb pad on a video game, you can actually alter the sound. And you can program what, how you want the sound to be altered or modified on the actual note or tone. The amazing part of the whole initial aftertouch system is that it is polyphonic. That is, up to eight keys can be pressed, and all eight keys are analyzed in real time. As, to far, as far as to what the pressure that's applied to each key. So there, although there are keyboards that do have aftertouch, it's just based upon one of the eight keys, whatever the system of the keyboard is, decides is the best one to measure with. This, and they only use one sensor underneath this entire rack of keys. But since you have an individual sensor for each key, you have the ability to control out of, like say, for example, a C, a C chord, you can actually modulate the E note or the G or you can sweep up and down by just applying the pressure from your fingers. It makes the keyboard almost alive as an extension of the human body in many ways. And that's one of the reasons why these particular keyboards are valued. Alright, now let's get to the fun part. Let's go ahead and start repairing this board. The board is attached to this plywood base with just standard wood screws and spacers. You just get your stubby Phillips head screwdriver. Now is a good time to get a good digital camera with a good macro setting and take a digital photograph so you know where every chip is located or even take a small permanent felt pen and write the chip number right next to the, its location. The sockets that I have chosen are the machine pin with built-in capacitors. You don't have to have the built-in capacitors, you can just use a regular socket but solder your capacitor on the back side. But these just make the installation much more clean. 
due to the sheer number of wires, the large number of wires going to this board and the fact there is no connector, you're going to have to work on it while it's in the keyboard. But there's plenty of room. Just flip her upside down and begin to soldering your parts and installing your new chips. Just to keep me from making a mistake, I'm going to do one at a time. So I'm going to replace, I'm going to unsolder the chip, solder in the socket, and install the new chip as I move on down the line. I have a static grounded soldering iron, so there won't be any problems against me damaging the board. Plus, the new CMOS chips are protected against static much better than this old stuff was. The uh, new devices should have an expected lifespan of anywhere from 100, 200 to thousands of years. They're very reliable versus the old product. Alright, let's get busy. Begin by unsoldering the first chip. TC4073. At the top is the original Toshiba TC4073P and below it is a Texas Instrument brand new factory fresh replacement and at the very bottom is a socket that matches the replacement chip. We're going to install the socket first and then install the chip. Alright with the IC removed we're ready to install the socket. If you look at the silkscreen marking on the board, there's a notch at the top. That indicates that pin 1 is in the upper left hand corner. If you look at this socket, it also has a notch. So install the socket so that it's oriented the same as the silkscreen marking. And press it flush against the board. Alright, let's solder it in. With your socket in place, go ahead and insert the IC. At the top of the socket is a, is a notch. As you'll see on the actual IC towards the top, there's also a notch. To avoid boring you, I'm not going to show me soldering in the next 27 ICs. So we're going to warp ahead. Okay, that's enough solder fumes for one day. All the chips are installed on the TKC board. Only two things left to do are to install two electrolytics on the power supply rails. The first will be a 100 microfarad electrolytic right here between the minus 6.5 and the J jumper, which is actually chassis ground. The negative terminal of the capacitor goes towards the negative 6.5, and the positive terminal will actually be going to the J or the jumper. Now I'll take a pair of cutters and trim the leads. Final capacitor will go between the plus 8.5 volts and the E or the chassis ground lug down here. So conveniently there's two side by side so the negative lead here goes to the bottom donut and the positive lead which is the long terminal goes to the plus 8.5. Go ahead and solder it in. Double check all your work and even power up the keyboard and test. Reattach the board by tightening down the four screws. Uh, the short circuit is gone. That's a good thing. 